Whoa, got Dooley there. Sorry about that. Zach of all, singer, songwriter, guitar player extraordinaire. Links to everything down below, the Instagrams, the Yams, the Spotify's, the Musics, the whatever you kids do to follow people these days. I can be found there. Would appreciate you listening to my latest album, The Way We Were, uh, streaming again at that link below. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about an album that you're not supposed to hear. I'm hoping to turn this into a little bit of a mini-series within this channel, just because I like talking about um, musics and uh, albums, and uh, especially when it's Bob Dylan. Listen, many of you out there know me on a personal level, and you know that I can't even so much as fart without talking about Bob Dylan. And I fart a lot. So, in this video, the goal is here we're going to talk about an album that we're not supposed to hear, mainly because Bob Dylan didn't want it released. Um, we'll go through a little bit of the history there and talk a little bit about some standout tracks. But first things first. Uh, uh. So brief history here on uh, Bob Dylan and uh, this album and why we're not supposed to hear it. So 1970s Bob Dylan is kind of coming back. He kind of disappeared for a bit there towards the end of the 60s. That whole motorcycle crash incident which is fascinating and is still widely discussed among Dylan fans to this day. Um, so 1972 they released Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits Volume 2 and around this time he is uh, a, up to renew his contract with Columbia, and Clive Davis, the uh, head of the musical division for Columbia Records at the time, was able to secure a $400,000 uh, clause there for a, as a minimum there for the album, for the, uh, the soundtrack album actually of the film Pat, Bar Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, which stars Chris Christopherson. Uh, Dylan actually makes a cameo in it. That album gave us uh, Knockin' on Heaven's Door, which, as everybody knows, or you should know, uh, the uh, Guns N' Roses covered it later on. Um, so, to give you kind of a framework of how generous that $400,000 is, I know it doesn't sound really like a whole lot in show business terms, especially for a star at the time of Dylan's caliber, or just in general, but $400,000 today rounds out to just north of 27 Millie Bobby Browns, okay? So it's a very generous uh, minimum there. And so that covers that soundtrack album plus the next two Dylan releases. Um, the album itself, Pat Barrett and Billy the Kid, uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, um, it did chart actually, chart made it to number 13, I believe, on the US charts. Um, but the album itself, was kind of critically panned, despite having that awesome Knockin' on Heaven's Door soundtrack and uh, a Billy number seven as well as a standout track. Um, the Bunkhouse theme is kind of fun. So there's it's not, it's not a bad record, it just wasn't received well. And uh, the film was probably received worse <laughs> than, than the album. I haven't actually seen it. Um, I, I would like to. I've, I've seen the, the cameo clip that Bob Dylan has. I digress. The album is uh, not received well, um, and so naturally the relationship between Bob Dylan and Columbia sours, and um, CBS, who was the parent company for Columbia at the time, this is before Sony um, bought Columbia Records, decides to lay off uh, Clive Davis, and so unfortunately as a result of that, Bob Dylan loses that $400,000 minimum for the soundtrack album and then his next two releases. So he splits uh, from Columbia. Big move, bold move. Moves to David Geffen, uh, his uh, fledgling Asylum record. So that uh, record label had uh, Joni Mitchell signed on there and then a very young Tom Waits uh, released uh, the Closing Time record on that label and I believe Heart of Saturday Night as well, The Birds were also signed on to Asylum. So this is kind of the beginning of uh, David Geffen. If you know anything about David Geffen, big wig in the music industry. Um, scores Bob Dylan. And then Bob Dylan releases actually one of my favorite Dylan albums, Planet Waves. It reunites him with the band and they start going on tour for the first time as an, uh, an ensemble since uh, 1966. And that album would go on to do uh, very well. 
Um, but this is where things kind of get sinister. This is why this album is referred to as Columbia's Revenge. Um, without Dylan's knowledge or his consent, Columbia farts out this album. And um, despite that, it actually didn't do, uh, commercially at least, too bad. I mean, it didn't chart in the United Kingdom, but it did make it to number 17 here on the U.S. Um, now, comparatively to other Dylan albums, that's actually pretty bad. But in general, if you're charting, you're, you're bringing in money. So Columbia's kind of in that position where they don't know what to do without one of their big name acts. And so um, they released this album, and the album itself contains no original material. Uh, it's mostly covers of contemporary hits at the time, and uh, kind of what Bob Dylan cut his teeth on in his, you know, his formative years, uh, old folk songs. Um, and these were primarily drawn from the recording sessions in New York City for the Self-Portrait album. Um, so really what these tracks are, um, are just a series of outtakes and demos, and um, one critic described them as really just warm-up takes before, you know, warm-ups to get you know, the band in tune and everything like that before they actually recorded the album. So, um, they, and the, the funny thing about this is, is they actually timed the release of, so this is how you know, uh, they meant to do Dylan some damage, is they timed this release of this album a about a month before Planet Waves, uh, with the Asylum Records came out. So that's the story of Dylan 1973-72, uh, I believe... Uh, it sometimes gets really credited as being released in 73. I forget the exact date there. Um, but yeah, Bob Dylan did not sign off on this. I mean, some of the tracks probably would have stayed on there, um, but I think he probably would have definitely liked to have included some more original material um, and has had nothing, you know, didn't, didn't have a whole lot of positive things to say about that. I mean, later on, the story does have a happy ending. He would come back to Columbia a little bit later on and was able to salvage that relationship. But... That's a brief history of the album. So now I want to go into some standout tracks from that album here. So I have a few written down. Um, starting off the album is uh, Lily of the West here, and that was in the intro here. Um, Lily of the West is an, uh, it's, it's an Irish folk song um, that, depending on how you want to look at it, can actually be seen as a metaphor for um, Irish and British um, Scottish immigrants to colonial America. Um, you can also see it as sort of a uh, metaphor for the uh, relationship between Irish and the Irish and the uh, British, Ca British Catholic Church uh, at the time. Um, so I mean, it's a strong, it's a decent um, vocal performance by Bob Dylan. Some great harmonic work. I could stand without the background vocalists, and that to me, that's. Uh, a, uh, this would have otherwise been a perfectly serviceable release um, without those those background vocalists and um, Al Cooper is playing as allegedly playing the clavinet in that um, that keys part you're hearing there could do without that as well I would like to see maybe um, like an actual organ sound or um, even Bob Dylan had access to some brilliant guitarists even just some some maybe like a classical nylon string sound in there would have helped that song. Well, I gave those tears my brain And the name she bore was Flora Lily of the way And the name she bore was Flora Lily of the way Next up is going to be uh, the song Sarah Jane. I'll give you a little bit of that here. I'm gonna take a trip on the big back mill. Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. Ain't nothing to do but to sit down and sing and rock about my Sarah Jane. So, Sarah Jane, a fun little, uh, another traditional folk song there. Um, interestingly enough, one of my favorite things about this song is what made me think when I first listened to this that it was original. Uh, Dylan originalist because his wife at the time was named Sarah. He'd married uh, in secret in 1965 the uh, the Playboy Bunny uh, uh, Sarah, Sarah Lowndes and um, He did have some kids at the time the lyrics go. I've got a wife and five little kids um, He actually had four he had uh, Jesse Jacob I 
forget, and then his adopted daughter Maria, I blank it on the name of the fourth kid. So pretty close there. Um, the Some of the lyrics there uh, make me think it dates to about the time of the Civil War in the America, American Civil War, because uh, there's a line in there about um, Yankees are building boats, uh, we're going to sink those rebels. Um, kind of referring to what we would, what the South referred to, um, uh, uh, to Northerners by Yankees. Um, so yeah, Sarah Jane, a fun, upbeat song. Again, those background vocals kind of suck. I would have mixed those down a bit more. But again, a fun, upbeat song. And I think with the two or three more takes, they would have nailed something there. There would have been really something special about that. But moving on to, um, ooh, Joni Mitchell, Big Yellow Taxi. So this is a cover of, uh, of a Joni Mitchell song here. I'll, I'll, I'll play a few bars of it for you just to kind of give you an idea. A pink hotel, a boutique, and a swinging hot spot. Don't it always go to show? You never know what you got till it's gone. They pay paradise, they put up a parking lot. So that's Dylan's version of Big Yellow Taxi. I think he really captured the the energy there, um, and and the. Uh, the vibe of Joni Mitchell's version of the song. Um, he's, he's using his, he, he, I think he should have used his country voice on this album, or this song, would have definitely benefited from that. Um, he's no Joni Mitchell. Um, listen, Bob Dylan is known as many things, but a superb singer is not one of them. And I say that as a fan and a defender of his vocals. I mean, he is capable of giving a good vocal performance. I mean, uh, on A Fool Such As I, um, or what we'll talk about here a little later on, Spanish is the loving tongue. Um, he's using that country crooning voice, and it sounds awesome. So deploying that here, I think, would have uh, it would have been a, a serviceable cover. I mean, there is no, like, unique Dylan stamp on it. Um, it's almost cut and paste here. I'll go ahead and just, for matters of diagnostics, play you a little bit of Joni's Mitchell's version. So here that is. With a pink hotel, a boutique, and a swinging hot spot. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? They pay paradise, put up a parking lot. You decide. Um, another standout track, uh, The Ballad of Ira Hayes. Um, so this was actually uh, written by a friend of Dylan's in the early 60s who was a Native American. Um, Lots of people have a version of this song. I think the most famous version, though, is by uh, Dylan supporter and Dylan fan Johnny Cash um, on his... Um, uh, he released an album about four or five years before this album, uh, the Dylan album, um, just ex exclusively dealing with uh, Native Americans and civil rights issues there regarding that. And that's kind of what this song deals with. So Ira Hayes was actually one of the four men it's an incredible story. I'm not going to tell the whole thing here, but he was one of the four Marines. Uh, that classic picture uh, during World War II of those Marines lifting the American flag over Iwo Jima. So Ira Hayes is one of those Marines, and he would move eventually back to Arizona, I think it was, and unfortunately uh, develop alcoholism and, and would pass away. Um, there, a line that stands out to me in that song is, is he, uh, uh, he died one morning drunk and alone in a land that he fought to save. It's uh, rough to think about that, and it's unfortunate. Um, but, moving right along. He died drunk early one morning. Alone in a land he'd fought to save. Two inches of water in a lonely ditch was the grave for Ira Hayes. Call him Drunken Ira Hayes He won't answer anymore Not the whiskey drinking Indian Or the Marine who went to war So Spanish is the loving tongue. Um, again, it's another traditional folk song there. It's actually one that would show up a little bit later on uh, in the Dylan canon, as it were. Um, he would perform it with the band. Um, on some of the uh, bootleg, well, so in the bootleg series, I think it's volume 11 there, 
um, another self-portrait or something like that, where it's taken a lot from a lot of the same sessions as this album and then the self-portrait sessions. Um, some excellent piano playing. I think Uncle Bob is playing, I call him Uncle Bob, Bob Dylan is playing the piano on this. Some, some amazing uh, piano work there, and of course he's singing in that country uh, croon there. Um, again, I'm, I, there's something about the self-portrait, um, New Morning, and, and this album here, where, with Bob Dylan in background vocals, it just it doesn't really work. Um, later on in the gospel years, it does. Um, but this first phase, it's, it's jarring to listen to. Um, not a fan of that. Broke her heart, lost my own Adios, mi corazón Spanish ears, the loving tongue Soft as music That'll do it for this video. Uh, I want to remind you again, links to all of my musics down below. I'm trying to find some interesting things to talk about here that other musicians haven't really talked about in addition to promoting my music. So biggest way you can do that is, is by just listening to the songs on the streaming service of your choice. I have Spotify linked below. It's the one that most people use following me on Instagram, subscribing here on YouTube. really helps and will motivate me to make your precious content. Until next time, this is your pal Zach, signing off, reminding you to take a good look at what you're about to eat. It's not so important to know what it is, but it's absolutely critical to know what it was. Bread is bread, cheese is cheese, praise God. I don't have a plectrum there, sorry about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.